Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what the uh, Bruin uh, Second Amendment Supreme Court decision means for you, for me, for us. Okay, what does it mean for us? Um, common questions that I have been asked uh, in the comments section, uh, both uh, you know in the different uh, social media platforms, is uh, number one, does this now mean that I can carry a gun anywhere? Uh, how does it affect AR-15s, how does it affect the ghost guns, how does it affect standard capacity magazines? Okay, so these are the common questions I have been asked. All right, so uh, let's go through that first question. Uh, can you now carry a gun without a permit? No, uh, the, the case actually was specifically focusing on um, the fact that you need to get a permit in some states in order to carry so in some places like New York, uh, California, Illinois, uh, New Jersey, uh, Hawaii, uh, I forget which the other ones are, um, Washington State probably, um, in, in, in some of these places, in order to get a carry permit, uh, you had to show uh, a special need, okay? And that special need could not just be self-defense, okay? Um, you know, self-defense from tyrants and dictators that's what that's what i would put down but uh you couldn't just say self-defense you had to have a special need um and in most cases and i know from personal experience because i i've, I've actually interacted with people that did have these carry permits in new york city uh it it meant uh either number one you had already had an attempt on your life right i had one woman that had actually been shot uh during multiple attempted uh, robberies, you know, in her business. Uh, so only after she was shot did they say, "Okay, I guess you, you do need a permit." Okay, so you have to you have to show bullet holes as proof of a special need. Okay, um, after the fact, right? you can do it before. It had to be after the fact. The other thing is, you had to show that you were really rich. Uh, so um, a couple of people that I knew that had carry permits, in order to get it, they had to show like weekly deposits of like $5,000 or more, and now might be up to $10,000. Um, that was the only way that they were able to get a carry permit, okay? So you either had to already have bullet holes in your body, uh, or you had to have lots of money in your pocket that you could, you know, you know, give to them, okay? In order, that was the only way you were getting a carry permit in New York City. Other parts of the state it was a little bit different, um, but uh, what this case did is that in those states, uh, they can't force you to show this special need. So in the long term, it turns the entire country into what they call shall issue, which means that they have to give you a carry permit upon demand. Okay, uh, like here in Pennsylvania, right? You fill out, yeah. I mean, I gotta fill out an application to get a permit, but once I fill it out, you know, they have to give it to me. Unless they can show that, hey, there's a specific reason why I shouldn't get it, you know, but, you know, absent of that, like a conviction or something, they have to give it to me. So that wasn't the case, like, in six of these, six of the states, right, they, you know, where they had to give it to you. So, um, now, does this mean that New York and California and Illinois are automatically going to start handing out the carry permits on demand? No, what's going to happen is they're going to come up with all sorts of roadblocks and you're going to end up basically with a class action suit where the people are not going to turn around and sue the state um, and they're probably and they're going to win. Right. Because now the lawyers defending them have ammunition. Right. They can point to a specific uh, Supreme Court case that says that, hey, we you know, the, the words right to bear arms. Right. Right, bear means carry. Okay, they, you know, so so there's a Supreme Court decision that says that they have a right to bear arms to carry guns in public. Um, so the lawyers now have ammunition. Okay, um, so it's going to basically, if, you know, over a year or two, it's going to turn the entire country uh, into a into a, a shout issue. Okay, so that, that's the that's the first part, and that was the that was the main focus of it, right? But um, and, and it could have stopped there, right? They could have cut it off there, but uh, Clarence Thomas did not do that, right? Because he was the guy, he, the guy that wrote this opinion, and then everybody else kind of uh, signed off on it. And then actually, I heard today that Alito pushed it even further because he also added additional comments uh, that 
included into this opinion that will also that are also basically part of this opinion now um so the other important parts of this right really important parts of this is that clarence thomas said that the second amendment uh, is not a second class right okay it's equal to all of the other rights in the bill of rights okay uh, so that's also really really important that's going to help us in the long run um and then there's um the other and this is this is very important okay uh the states were these anti-gun states uh, we're using this concept of what they called intermediate scrutiny, which I never even heard before this case come up. But uh, because what happened is that they had the prior uh, Heller and McDonald Supreme Court decisions that affirmed that the Second Amendment is an individual right. Right. But when it was going to the courts, they would look at that and say, fine, that's step one. But then they would go to a step two that they just made up. Right. They just completely made this up. Um, they basically pulled it out of their asses, right? And, it, and basically they would say that, okay, now beyond these prior court decisions, uh, what's in the best interest of society, okay? So what, what, what Clarence Thomas did is, in his opinion, he said, you know what, that, that stuff that you pulled out of your ass, well, you shove it back in there, okay? Because that's not going to fly around here. So he said that you, you have to use the specific wording of the Constitution, the specific wording of these, um, you know, the specific wording um, uh, of the cases that came before, you know, the Heller McDonald decisions, you cannot just make up stuff, okay? So, w the importance of that is that's going to affect us with these things, right? With the, with the AR 15s, okay? With the, with the ghost guns, okay? With the standard capacity magazines. And the red flag was okay. Um, it's going to help us with all of these things, okay? Uh, because, for example, with the red flag laws, and and they're actually busy today, the day after this uh, opinion came out, passing red flag laws through the Congress, all right? So red flag laws, um, you know, is basically uh, they're taking your guns away without due process, okay? So uh, prior to this decision coming out, you know, where the Second Amendment was treated like a second class right you know maybe they could have kind of got away with it but now that like clarence thomas laid it out listen it's not a second class right it's just as good as the others uh the red flag laws sooner or later probably sooner are going to be struck down uh on that basis okay and that's because he elevated the second amendment to where it's supposed to be equal to all of the all of the other rights okay so that's the, that's the first thing now the fact that um he got rid of this whole made up intermediate scrutiny BS. Okay. Uh, that's going to come back to the ARs, ghost guns, magazines. Okay. Uh, because he's basically saying that uh, the Second Amendment, you know, uh, protects guns, right? Arms. Arms stand. Arms are short for armaments, right? Which is basically military equipment. Um, so so we, they've already established that this stuff. That, that that the Second Amendment is an individual right, okay? Um, and and now, for some made-up reason, they're trying to put restrictions on all these things over here. Uh, well, they're going to have a real hard time um, justifying that in the courts after this ruling just came out. So a, a lot of these cases are, are sitting in the Supreme Court. Right? There's, there's cases in the Supreme Court that are sitting with regards to AR-15s, um, with regards to magazines, um, sooner or later, I think the ghost gun case is going to show up there. And what's going to happen is, this, most likely, the Supreme Court is going to send it back to the lower courts, and he's in the, and they're going to tell him, "Listen, you got to rethink your decision based on this new decision that we not have now issued, uh, which says that the Second Amendment is, you know, is is a, is." The same as any other right okay um so this is going to affect all these things okay it's going to affect it it's not going to affect it immediately right it's not going to be an immediate thing but it is going to affect it um and, and those are the those are the key you know those are the key things the fact that they got rid of this uh intermediate scrutiny uh the fact that thomas elevated the second amendment to the same level as all of the other rights um and the other thing I liked about this uh, Thomas decision is that uh, the uh, the you know he I, I believe he caught wind that the anti-gunners 
you know, because they they kind of knew that he was that the Supreme Court was going to um, uh, strike down this this law in New York where you had to show like a superior reason, you know, for carrying a gun. So the direction that they were going to try and what they were going to try and do is they were going to try and declare uh, like almost all of New York City a sensitive area, right? Because they're like, okay, well, you can't carry guns in courts because it's sensitive areas. You can't carry guns, um, you know, um, you know, in a federal building because it's a sensitive area. Okay, so so what they were going to do is they were going to try and declare everything, like all of Manhattan, a, a, a sensitive area, okay? And he preemptively said in his opinion that you can't do that. You cannot declare Manhattan a sensitive area. They are... Uh, restricted to places that were historically considered sensitive areas, right? Like the courthouses, etc. Okay, um, so we, we got a lot of good stuff out of this opinion that 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 you know for, that the attorneys, right, the lawyers uh, can work with, right? Uh, and it's you know it's a never-ending fight. You know, um, it's there's it's it's highly unlikely that there would ever come a decision out of the courts. Where we're like, okay, we want to end the story. They'll never, you know, you know, they'll they'll never gonna come after our gun rights again. That, that's not gonna happen. Uh, it, it's a constant back and forth. It's a constant fight. You know, I, I, the the analogy I like to use it's it's like being in a boxing ring, right? You, you're in a boxing ring. You're fighting. You know, you're throwing punches. You're taking punches, right? Nobody goes into a boxing ring uh, thinking that they're not gonna take punches, right? You know, you can use your you can get keep your arms up. You know, you can move around, right? But there's gonna, you can, you know that shots are gonna get through, okay? Um, so, you know, fighting for our gun rights is the same thing, okay? Um, you know, some days we win, some days we lose, okay? The goal here is to win more days than we lose. So yesterday we won big, okay, with uh, um, with the Supreme Court decision that came out. Today we're losing, right, because they're passing red flag laws and a bunch of other shit through the Congress. Okay, but between yesterday's win, and, you know, big between yesterday's big win and today's minor loss, okay, uh, we're we're ahead again. We're 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 advancing. Okay, so we're up on points basically, um, because the win from yesterday's gonna in the long run is gonna is gonna I think really push back the minor loss from today. Uh, and here's the thing: as far as the red flag law. That's being pushed through the Congress today. Uh, from what from what I understand, right? From everything that's being said out there, um, all they did, all they have done with this is say the states that already have red flag laws in place uh, get some extra money, and this, but the states that don't have uh, red flag laws in place get an equal amount of money. Okay? Initially, the way they, they they completely threw this back to the states. Okay, they did not try to do this at the federal level. The approach was that okay, we, since we can't pass anything at the at the federal level, we're gonna try and uh, and give the all the states an an incentive to try and pass red flag laws. Right. So the way they started this thing out and said okay, these are the states that have red flag laws. We're gonna give them money. Okay, and um, in order for other states to get that same amount of money, they also have to pass red flag laws. But then through this BS negotiating that they did, it ended up with, well, no, no, because they were like, no, no, that's not going to work. They're like, okay, fine. All the other states that don't have red flag laws, they get an equal amount of money. Okay, so uh, where are they at? Basically, the states that have it get sa the same amount of money as the states that don't have it. So nothing has really changed. Okay, so it's a, it's a it's a it's a minor you know it's a minor thing. Um, I mean there, there's probably a couple of things in there. I mean they were talking about I think they threw some money for school security, which I guess is a good thing. I, I haven't read the details on that. Uh, so they they throw in a couple. But the this bill that has passed through Congress, the focal point of it, right? The thing that all the senators were focusing in on was focusing on is how can we print up more money and and get it right so that's what this was all about it was about it was about getting more money uh so the the, the really the biggest damage coming out of this uh bill right this red flag bill bill that they passed through the senate is uh, more inflation right because what they're gonna do is with all this extra money that they're not going to give out to the states where they're going to get it from uh, they're going to print it up like they 
always do, right? They're just going to print it up. And if you guys don't think they're printing money, a trillion seconds is 31,000 years, okay? So when they say that they're, they've, they've got a budget deficit, uh, we got what, like a budget deficit of like $30 trillion, right? When, when you fact when you think that a trillion seconds is 30,000 years, right? Uh, th- you know that this type of money doesn't exist. There's no place that you can borrow uh, a trillion dollars from. It doesn't exist. It's electronically printed on a computer. So this red flag bill, the, the, the whole point of this is how can we print up more money and spread it out there? And all it's going to do is basically devalue the money even more. Because anytime they're printing up money, you know what? I see that they're printing money. And what do I do? I raise my prices. I want to raise my prices faster than they're printing their money. Okay? I want to stay ahead of them. So that's why you see the gas prices go up, the food prices going up. You know, everybody is, every businessman is racing to raise their prices faster than the government is printing money. Okay? So um, let me know what you guys think. And, you know, this is one of those things that, like, this con- there's information coming out, like, every day on this. Um, you know, I don't even think that the people that voted for this bill that passed through the Congress have actually seen all the, have actually even read it. Okay. So I'm sure there's more stuff that's going to come out in the next couple of days. But from everything I have heard, that's what this red flag bill is all about. It's, it's about uh, printing up money and dividing it up amongst states. That's, that's what it's going to come down to. Um, but the Supreme Court victory that we had yesterday, uh, it's not going to immediately do anything for us, right? Uh, you know, it's, even if you're in New York, it's not going to immediately do anything for you. But over the next two or three years, you're going to start... You're going you're gonna to start seeing people uh, in New York, in New York City, uh, carrying guns. And that's really important because the more people carry guns, the more people see it, hear about it, and they're like, you know what, I want a gun too, you know? So it helps spread the gun culture. And ultimately, that's what we win. I, I, I spoke about this in yesterday's video that I did. Okay, The way that we win long term okay, is not through the Congress, right? It's not through the presidency. It's not through the Supreme Court. Okay, that's not how we win. The way we win is by getting these guns into the hands of as many people as possible and spreading the gun culture. Okay, that's how we win. We take the non-gun owners and we turn them into gun owners. We bring them to our side um, and we give them something to protect. Right, because uh, people in New York who don't own guns, Second Amendment means nothing to them. You know, now, you know, you take. You say, okay, you got to, you can own this too now. And they're going to take this in the hand and be like, yeah, I really like this. I want, I want to keep this. So now all of a sudden, when somebody tries to take away their gun rights, it means something to them. Okay. So that's important. That's how we win. We don't win through the Congress. We don't win through the presidency. We don't win through the uh, Supreme Court. We win by bringing more people over to our side uh, and having them vote in favor of gun rights. Okay. That's where the victory is um and that's why i tell people listen you, you gotta vote it makes a difference even though these republicans they vote against us half the time half the time they're voting for us right so so half the time they might be against us but half the time they're they're they're, they're working for us take that you know because if they're not because otherwise if they go over to the other side then now you've got everybody working against you okay so to me, you know, voting for Republicans, um, because remember, yeah, I, I totally get it. There's no difference between Democrats and Republicans. They're all just interested in, you know, in what's good for them, right? Um, but you don't want Democrats and Republicans working together on over there. You want to split them up. You want to divide and con- conquer your enemies. So what you do is you tell the Republicans, hey, do this, we'll vote for you. Do that, we'll vote for you, right? You bring them over to your side, and yeah, they're not going to be loyal, but at least half the time, you know, they're working for you. Instead of 100% of the time, you got both Democrats and Republicans work voting against you. Okay, so uh, some things for you guys to consider. It's all about strategy. You know, nobody, you know, you know, thing I said yesterday, when you go into battle, you want to have as many allies as you can, okay? But you don't expect your allies to all be at the same level, right? They're not all going to be loyal. They're not all going to be you know, equally equipped, they're not going to all be um, equally trained, okay, uh, but they're, but they're better off, you, you're better off with them on your side than on the other side, right, you don't want your allies fighting for the other side, 
uh, even if they're just on your side and, and doing nothing, right, and, and being completely worthless like these Republicans are half the time, right, at least they're not helping the other side, okay? So, uh, again, it's all part of, think, you know, thinking uh, strategically long-term, right, because there's never going to be one big fight where you win. You know, it's constant back and forth. It's like if you look at boxing matches, right, I keep coming back to that, very rarely do you see a knockout, Okay, people win boxing matches by gaining by points, right? Uh, very rarely do you see a knockout, especially in amateur boxing. Because I, you know, I, I when I train people, it was all amateur boxing. Well, in amateur boxing, you've got you got a, a, a padded helmet on, right? So it's really hard to hit anybody hard enough to actually knock them out because of all the padding they got around the head. So you're not getting a knockout, okay? you win by scoring lots of points that add up to a victory, right? And a lot of times it's like, hey, you know, uh, it's a difference of you scored 20 points, other guy only scored 15 points or maybe even just 18 points. You win by just a couple of points, right? That's how that's how you win. It's, it's usually a small difference like that. So anyway, I hope this video was interesting and informative. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you're not on my channel, subscribe. I'll talk to you all soon. And on Odyssey, make sure you follow me on Odyssey, which is an uncensored platform over there. I am Pocono Tactical, and on Gun on um, uh, Gun Streamer, Huge Tube, uh, and um, what's the other one? I forgot the other one. Over there, I'm I'm uh, Pocono Tactical. I'll talk to you all soon.